I hope you're all suitably refreshed and ready for our last portion of the day. So I just want to say a few words about our performances today to draw it together because we have put some thought, me and our student musicians, into their choices today. As I said to you, all the students playing and singing today, um, they were invited from joining our program at the Conservatoire alongside their fellow students and ensembles they were already working in. So if you remember back to Zach and Charlie's performance, I think that exemplified really the power of music, that it can speak to us where words fail. Music's a universal language and it communicates directly and powerfully. Sometimes it's it says things to us that aren't comfortable, it can challenge, it can um, comment, it can protest, if you like, it challenges social discourse. Uh, so I think Zach and Charlie's piece was a perfect example of that. That was a piece not designed for entertainment, that had a very powerful message. And also was a contemporary piece. So music being innovative and not always stuck in the past, if you like. So our second performance, Beth, and Sarah, and the voice is our first and most primal form of communication. We all have a voice, and it is our first instrument, if you like. So that exemplified the power of music to absolutely directly and powerfully communicate. As Beth said to us, the theme of her songs there was love. So if we take that to us, our themes today about um, the health service, care for one another, and as we've learned today, the importance of self-care, the human being at the centre of all that we do, and music exemplifying that. So we come now to our final performance. I am, I'm pleased we've dotted them out through the day. So we have this running thread, if you like, through the day of art coming amongst the debate and always refocusing us in that fashion. So, Art here now connects us with our ancestors, with a lineage that travels back in time. If you like, art is a, a repository of our society's memories, of our culture, of our traditions, of our styles. So we are going to hear a piano trio. We have here Vasco, Camilla and Molly playing, you, playing to you some Mendelssohn. They're going to play the first movement of Mendelssohn's piano trio in D minor written in 1839, so over 180 years ago. So we've gone from a contemporary piece at the start to a traditionally classical piece. And um, Mendelssohn's friend, Robert Schumann, famous composer, called this the master trio of the age. So I think you're in for a treat. And again, looking at our themes today, I feel this takes us to collaboration, working with others. So within the piano trio, the piano, the violin, and the cello, the three musicians have to work together. And at times, for those of you that have not had the experience of perhaps playing in a musical ensemble, just to say a few words, it's not that a musician learns their part and keeps their head down and only plays their part, okay? So at times, one or other is the leader of the musical um, discourse. At times, others support at times there can be conflict, an argument even, and then there's those moments when all three voices come together much more powerfully than one could on its own. Um, so that other aspect of playing in a musical ensemble, we heard in the last panel talking about leadership, the importance of transposing, of adapting, of flexibility. So musicians have to do whilst they listen. Um, they are adapting um, they are uh, changing how they do something to work with other people in the moment in performance. And no one performance is the same as, as the other. So today will be your unique performance of this work from our trio. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Camilla, Molly and Vasco. <clears throat>